There's a little bit of Charlie in me. Cause I caught it on my voice off the radio in 73. Guy with the MCA record said, hey, I think you could be a big star. I said, oh, you think so? There's a little bit of Charlie in me. I was three years old when I knew I wanted to be a cowboy. Everything just came natural to me. When I hit the ground, I ran toward a horse. My dad was a cowboy, and his dad was a cowboy, and my uncles and cousins were cowboys, so everything I knew was cowboys. Give me a chat. I picked up a guitar when I was 17, 18. I used to take my guitar out to places where there was nothing but cattle, and I'd sing to the cows. It's like I used to see uh, cowboys do on a cowboy movie. They thought I was kind of crazy all my life. I couldn't even date a girl if I turned the radio on country. I said, what the heck are you listening to? <laughs> that happened to me. And there'll be no Charlie Pride was my favorite. You know, he was a black guy and singing country music. Everything I have is standing here in front I could identify of you with you. All I have to offer you is me. And East Bernard in the late 60s. I went to see Charlie Pride, and I think I was like 15, 16 years old. So when I got to the door, they said, um, we can't let you in. We don't want any racial problems. So I snuck back to my car and I let the windows down. And I listened to Charlie Pride through the window for about an hour. And my mom said, boy, I don't ever want you going back to East Bernard. Well, in 88 or 89, I started playing and singing at that same place. My first time playing in front of a crowd was in this club in Houston. I had never been in front of a spotlight before. I felt like I wanted to melt. I started playing. Then all of a sudden, I lifted up out of my body. I was watching the crowd watch me play. And the girl said, shut up. He's good. You know, and I can say, everybody, everybody said, be real quiet. He's, he's good. You know, and it, that's all I can remember was everybody saying, be quiet. He's good. They said, and you could be the next Charlie Pride. Everybody told me that.
In his journal this evening, John Davenport visits with a hopeful performer who hopes to be among those country and western stars someday. 33-year-old Larry Callis of Houston is in the delivery business. He delivers mail and songs. I couldn't admit it till about six years ago. From there, listening to Charlie Pride and had to watch the faces and see me up there on stage and being surprised yeah. for a black guy to sing country and western. Well, I love it. I got in this contest, KILT's gonna make me a country star. I got up there and sang, is anybody going to San Antonio? Guy saw me and he said, hey man, we could put a band around you. He said, I can get you in touch with George Strait's manager. You want to meet George Strait's manager? Okay. He said, well, I want you to come to Nashville. They flew me up there, put me in a limo. I went inside and they said, this is where you're going to record. He said, good luck, man. I'm pulling for you all the way. When I got in the recording studio, I started singing. And got with MCA Records. Noticed something in my voice. So he said, oh, no, you're just nervous, and we'll get the nerves out. They had a contract ready for me to sign. But after three demo songs, they said, we don't think we're going to sign him because there's something definitely wrong with his voice. And they were right. I went to some specialists. He said, you have something called vocal dysphonia. And I knew that was that. Instead of burying him. A couple of weeks ago, I had a mule that passed away. And in our last days, I never asked her to do anything. Which way is the wind blowing? This away? You know, I just let her pass away in her old age. I could have had a county come out and bury her. But I wanted to do it like my dad used to do, cows that passed away. My dad taught me how to ride, how to rope. Everything about cowboy life. I spent a lot of years not knowing what I wanted to do. I 
I thought I was going to be the next Charlie Pride. I thought I'd have a big house and do this and do that. Now, I see it's not about money. Can you tell me where the name Cowboy came from? They came from slaves because they had a house boy, they had a yard boy, and somebody worked the cows. He was called a cowboy. I'm old enough to be in my own museum. Back in 1971, Larry Callis, Hungerford, Texas. My cousin Tex, he won it in 1967, and he won it in 68. And this is him and Warden. That's my dad in the back. A guy named Bailey for a kid. He was flashy. And he got a name. Boy, he went, I mean, people used to gather around him. I, I think I learned a little bit from him. <laughs> this, what I'm doing with the museum, it's not about money. The black cowboys didn't get any recognition from the beginning. So I wanted people to know who they were. I just want to leave a memory on people. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. Wish you many, many blessings. Appreciate it. It's gonna make it last as long as I can. Okay. I'm just an old lonely cowboy in this world. Thinking about my favorite girl. Thinking about all the flowers and the birds and the horses in the world. I'm an old lonely cowboy down in Wharton, Texas. Sitting on my dad's old porch, picking my guitar and just thinking about the world. <laughs> 